Hello, hello, dear viewers. Welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In this video, we'll be looking at how to inspect the fuel level sending unit. This is a fuel level sending unit assembly with the outlet and return pipes connected. And we are going to see how it is inspected. When we look at the components, this is the outlet. This the larger pipe is the outlet. As you can see, it is connected to a strainer at the bottom. It will be sitting in such a manner inside the fuel tank. So fuel will be sucked in from the fuel tank through the strainer. Then it will go through this pipe and it will be sent to the fuel pump. And this one is acting like a return passage. This will be a return from the extra fuel from the fuel system will be returned to the fuel tank through this pipe. And here we have electrical connection. From this electrical connection, we will be using only two of them. In this model, there are three wires. We will be using only two of them. Well, some of the connections are not even installed. As you can see from the back, there are only three wires. On some models, those two terminals where there is no connection for this case are used to measure the fuel temperature. This is not connected. In this model, it is not connected. Well, this is installed on the fuel tank, and as you can see, we have a gasket here. Make sure that there is no crack or damage to the gasket when inspecting. This will prevent fuel leakage from the fuel tank. Fuel vapor should be remained in there, and it will also prevent foreign materials from entering into the fuel tank. It's a little bit dusty and rusty. Anyways, when we look at the other components, here we have the strainer, I have already mentioned that. Here we have the outlet pipe, here we have the return pipe, and here we have the float. This is the part that will determine the amount of fuel. This float will be lifted up depending on the amount of fuel inside the fuel tank. This is on the lower side when there is no fuel inside the fuel tank. When the level is very low, it will be down like this. And as the fuel increases, gradually this will grow up and uh, it will be on the top level when fuel is full. Now what this thing does, there is a variable resistor here. This float, as it moves up and down, it will slide on that variable resistor. So we are going to see if that variable resistor is working or not. So that will be determined by measuring continuity between this yellow line and the black line. The black will be like a ground, it is connected to the body, that will be one end of the variable resistor, and this yellow line will be another end of the variable resistor. So what we do, we connect a multimeter to those two wires and vary this by lifting the float. And we need to find a gradual change in resistance value. There should not be a sudden rise or drop. There should not be sharp increase or decrease of resistor. Rather, it has to gradually increase. If that is gradually increasing and if there is total continuity, then the fuel float is working perfectly. Now, what, what happens is in time, see this shiny surface where it is wiped by the moving member of the float? It will sometimes get con corroded or contaminated with foreign matter and that will prevent electrical continuity and that way it will stop functioning. So a simple cleaning can also fix it. If there is some mechanical damage that will also lead to failure of this system. Now let's hook up a multimeter and uh, let's see how it is inspected. For this inspection, you can use any multimeter where we have a resistance reading value. We will be using ohm setting on this multimeter. Let's make it to the lowest side, 200, and put it on resistance. Now let's connect the multimeter terminals. As I have said, I will be measuring between the yellow and black. Let's put it here. Let's put it here on the black and let's put it here on the yellow. 
Take care not to damage the connection in here. Just slide it on the side. Now it is connected. Now let's see. Now when we turn it on, we have 12.6 ohms reading. Now let's gradually change the float and have a look at the reading value. Now this is when the fuel is low. This is the lowest reading indicated on the multimeter is the lowest reading. Now let's gradually increase and see what happens to the resistance value. As you can see, the resistance is gradually increasing. It is continuously increasing. Here we have the maximum value, 186.3 ohms. So as you can see, there is a smooth increase from 12 point something to 186 ohms. So this indicates that this sending unit is working very nicely. You can always make sure that there is no open circuit. If there is open circuit, this resistance will become infinity and uh, make sure that there is no sharp rise or sharp drop in resistance value. Let's do it again. This is a maximum value where there is full fuel in the fuel tank. And when we go down, as the fuel level increase, decreases, the float will fall to the floor and the resistance value starts dropping. Now this signal will be sent to the fuel gauge inside the dashboard. The dashboard fuel gauge, depending on the resistance it receives from the sending unit, will display the amount of fuel inside the fuel tank. It will display either as empty or as full. So this is how you inspect the fuel level sending unit inside the fuel tank. So, from this test, we can conclude that the potentiometer is really nice and there is no sharp rise or drop in resistance value. So, this potential is very nice. It will be functional. Let's have a closer look at this resistance. Closer look at the potentiometer. The potential. So this is how it is working. Here we have a slider. The copper plated slider is there. That is made up of copper. This is the slider. It's made up of copper. And down there we have a variable resistor. So this is how the resistance is varied depending on the amount of fuel. This is when there is full fuel inside the fuel tank and this is when the gas is half full and this is when the gas is empty. So depending on this resistance value, the amount of fuel in the fuel tank will be displayed. So the fuel gauge inside the dashboard will have different magnetic field strings depending on the resistance at the sending unit that will control the fuel level indicator gauge on the dashboard. So this is how the fuel level sending unit operates. So the remaining is only to do visual inspection of the component parts. Make sure that this strainer is not damaged or blocked due to excessive foreign material or dirt accumulation. 
make sure it's very nice and uh, it's not damaged so visually you can inspect and uh, as we have previously mentioned make sure that this gasket is very nice no break no damage so make sure that it is not damaged so visually you can inspect this as well well this is all we have for you in this presentation hope you have enjoyed this video if you like it please smash the like button if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video